Hello everybody and welcome to another off-season video from me. Should be one of the last reviewing what happened last season. I'll go through my championship predictions at some point. But today we're going to look at the players who Hull City let out on loan over the course of last season. See how they did, see what fans of those teams think. And a huge thank you to all the guys who have helped me out with this video. You'll see them all um, over the course of it. Let's get straight into it. Let's start then with the first player who went out on loan and that is Harvey Cartwright. He went out on loan to then Grant McCann's side, Peterborough, at the very start of pre-season and it was expected that He'd be a number one there. McCann likes two strong goalkeepers. He brought in Lucas Bergstrom on loan from Chelsea at the same time. So it was expected that Harvey would, having worked with Grant before, be one of his favourites and challenge Bergstrom for the number one goalkeeping spot. But it wasn't to be. Injuries hampered him. He missed our pre-season game against Peterborough with injury. And from then on, it just never really recovered. He played once in the Papa John's Trophy and that was it for his time at Posh. As Grant McCann was sacked, he came back in January, then went out on loan to Wickham, where he had a bit more of a nicer time of things as it comes to when it comes to staying fit, but he still only made the one appearance in League One. Let's talk to a Peterborough and a Wickham fan now, starting with... My good mate, Caden, Cape United, for the Peterborough perspective on Harvey Cartwright. So, Cartwright, he spends so little time at Posh that I can't even remember his first name. But his only appearance he did make for Posh, I was at the game. It was a 2-1 loss to Stevenage. Not exactly a brilliant game. And the two goals weren't exactly his fault. He didn't really have much to do all game. And it's a shame that he had injuries. We didn't really get to see the best of him. But hopefully he goes on to have a good career. Good luck to Hull next season. And thanks for having me on, Joe. Thank you very much, Caden, for that. And now for the Wickham perspective on how Harvey Cartwright did, let's talk to James Richings, Wickham Wanderers reporter for Books Free Press. In terms of Harvey Cartwright's time at Wickham Wanderers, it was very much a signing that kind of needed to be made, but at the same time, it was all, it was also a signing of, oh, what does this mean for Max Strayek, the uh, Wickham's number one? When he signed, Liam Rossini, the whole city manager, said that would be a great experience for Harvey because he will try and develop himself as a number one and he'll also get some valuable first team experience. This confused a lot of the Wickham Wanderers fan base because at this point, Max Dryak, who, uh, Wickham's num current number one, who was signed in August, had pretty much played every game following his arrival from Livingston. So it was a case of, does this mean that Cartwright is going to be the new number one? And does this mean that Max, uh, Max Strike is going to leave? In the end, it turned out that um, Cartwright was just brought in as a backup to if Strike got injured. And lo and behold, I think it might have been a good experience for him. But ultimately, he only played two games for Wanderers. One of them was in the league and the other was in the senior cup competitions uh, which which were the reg regionalized competitions the bucks and bucks cup he made his debut in the latter and unfortunately he conceded a goal inside the first in, inside the first 30 seconds um, as wickham lost 2-1 against uh, non-league bracknell but the goal that he conceded the first goal was mainly down to the um, lack of concentration from the back four rather than rather than him himself and in april after he um on our, after wickham failed to reach the playoffs after following a 2-0 home defeat against Lincoln City. Matt Bloomfield decided to give Cartwright his league debut a, a week later at home to Cheltenham Town and it's fair to say that he didn't have the best of games. He couldn't do anything about the penalty that Cheltenham scored to put themselves one up. He um, couldn't do anything as well for the second goal that Alfie May scored uh, to make it 2-0 but unfortunately he was 100% at fault for the third goal when a long ball was played into the box. He caught it, but he fumbled it as he fell to the ground and Cheltenham uh, made it 3-0 in the final few minutes of the game. It, I, th I think it's been a very difficult season for him, both uh, on and off the pitch. And I like to think that he can rebuild his career following his brief spell at, uh, at Wickham. 
but he only played two games. One of them was in the league. One of them was in the regional cup competition. And I don't think it's a fair. I don't think it would be fair of me to have a full assessment of him based on those two games. But in the two games that I did see him play, he made a handful of comfortable and good saves. But unfortunately, I think his time at Wickham will be remembered for the mistake he made against Cheltenham at the end of April. Staying in that summer transfer window, then the next player we're going to cover is Andy Smith, going back out on loan to Grimsby for a second season, having signed a new contract here. In League Two, he made 37 appearances for Grimsby and scored once, and he played a key role in their FA Cup run, which saw them get to the quarter-finals, I believe it was. He played six times in that run, scoring once. And Andy's a player with a lot of potential. And I hope we, well, we keep him around as an option for next season because I, I, think he, I think he's quality. I really, really like him. And the sense I've got from Grimsby fans is that he is going to be a very, very, very solid player. He might not be there just yet to be first choice in the championship but he's going to be a quality quality asset for us in the future and to get the Grimsby perspective on things let's talk to Alex host of the DN35 podcast. So Andy Smith um, he feels more like our player than quite a few players we've signed for actual money he's going to be incredibly missed uh, he won our young player of the year awards both here on the podcast and uh, officially uh, at the club awards and rightly so uh, You've got an absolute gem of a player. Uh, he has uh, continued to rise through the standards and I think he's got a bright future in front of him. Really brave. Uh, anyone who wants to watch him um, run through six foot eight Kyle Hudlin in the National League playoff final, uh, please do. It was one of two contributions he made that day. Uh, one was knocking him unconscious, who had scored the um, the early goal. Uh, and then he also put John McAtee through for the equaliser as well. Um, he's phenomenal in that way, uh, really composed on the ball. And it's been great to see him develop as a youngster. He's been um, more composed, more of a ball winning, not just a ball winning mid uh, play, uh, defender now, but also a uh, sort of a ball playing defender too. Uh, he's continued to grow that part of him. He's had some incredible experience alongside him. Uh, both Luke Waterfall and Sean Pearson are stalwart uh, centre-backs. The sort of that you would like a player to sort of take attributes from and take uh, mental attributes from as well. Um, this season, um, he hasn't always been a regular starter. He's at times um, had to sit out. And I think even he would admit he had a small downturn in form uh, towards the end of last year. Uh, but he turned that around. He um, played a pivotal part in the um, FA Cup run, which took us to the quarterfinals. I'm not sure if you knew that. Um, and um, it's it's been great to see him develop. It's going to be sad to miss him. I mean, there were discussions on whether or not we should, you know, put a barricade up across the Humber Bridge to see if that would stop him from going. Um, and I hope our paths cross again at some point soon because he's going to be a... Uh, you know, an off the bench player uh, in sort of the championship, and I can imagine him doing that. I'm trying to think of the players that we had at that level, people like Peter Handerside and and the like. And I can't tell much difference between them really. He's um, he's exactly what you'd want from there. Um, he might he might struggle with the pace. Uh, he's still quite you know light footed, but if you're coming up against someone with a real speed demon, I mean, most centre backs will struggle anyway. But um, he's he's become intelligent enough to sort of work with that and deal with it so um yeah i mean this is lovely thank you very much for letting us have him and it's been uh two years of really been watching him develop has been a real pleasure now this is the first of two players that we're covering in this video who i haven't got a fan perspective from tom nixon went out to boston initially on a one-month loan in November that was cut short due to injury at the end of the month he only had a couple of days left on the loan anyway but after that in February once he got over the injury he went back to Boston for the remainder of the season and Boston fans sound thrilled with him he made 19 appearances in the National League North scoring once and like I say, the consensus I'm getting from Boston fans is that they think he's absolutely quality and he can have a very, very good career. He's a great young player 
when we brought him in from Stoke, I thought we could have a player on our hands here. I've watched him a handful of times for the under-21s and he is very, very good. Last time I watched him, he, he played on the left side, his weak side, and had a very, very good game, but predominantly a right back. And he thrived in that position for Boston as they stayed up in the National League North. I know what you're thinking. You're going to say, why aren't I covering Billy Chadwick as well? That is because Billy has left the club now, so it's not really of any relevance to us anymore, sadly. So the same goes for Tyler Smith at Oxford. Um, players like Macaulay Snellgrove, Josh Hines went out to Boston for a little bit as well. So I won't be covering those. And a quick apology to Jevon Mills, because I couldn't find any reliable data about how he performed for Solihull or Gateshead this season. Sorry, Jevon, if you're watching. Next up... We'll discuss Brandon Fleming, who went out on loan to Oxford in the second half of the season, played 15 times for Oxford, didn't score, and one of those appearances was in the FA Cup against Arsenal when he was subbed on in the 84th minute. Fleming and Smith, but we're focusing on Fleming here, both seem to struggle to nail down a place in the Oxford team, from the outside looking in anyway. But let's talk to Oxford fan Ian OUFC, his links are down in the description, as are everyone who's featured in this video, to see what he thought about the whole born fullback. Let's have a little chat about Brandon Fleming's time with Oxford United. Fleming joined us on loan during the January transfer window and was with us till the end of the season. He was a player I actually thought was quite decent, but unfortunately he could never really hold down a regular spot in the side. I don't necessarily think that there that is his fault though and I would say there are a couple of reasons which point to the fact that it's not really Brandon Fleming's fault at all. Number one, Brandon Fleming's best position is left wing back. That is a position that Oxford rarely used last season. So when Fleming did play, it was either his left back or a left sided midfield player. Not really his strengths I would say and therefore he never really got a consistent run in the team. Throw into that as well, Oxford were a mess last season. Those players that we signed on loan in January, I think we sold them up the river, Tyler Smith being one of them as well. Oxford's form was terrible at the back end of last season. It completely nosed out, dived, it fell off a cliff. It ended up with a managerial change and we barely survived with two games to go in the League One season. And all those things, I think, were contributing factors towards Brandon Fleming never really getting a settled run in the team. But when he was on the field, I thought he was pretty decent. I was some sloppiness when he played in defence, and I think that's an area he needs to work on, is his defensive um, side of the game. But going forward, I thought there was plenty of things to be encouraged about. I thought his reading of the game was pretty good. I thought he's a decent turn of pace, decent turn of skill, and um, good cross, a good passer all those things that you would like to see but above all else you could never question his effort and his determination when he was on the field of play and as a fan those are the things you always love to see the next player and the final player that i don't have a fan opinion for in this video is dokan cynic who went back out on loan to antalya sport where we signed him from in the summer for the second half of the season as I'm recording this, he's made 11 appearances and scored three goals. Their final game of the season is today, as I'm recording this, on the 30th of May. And I judge it just by looking at the record that Cynic has done pretty decently. I'll just get it up on my computer screen here. Cynic, 11 games, three goals, one assist at Antalya Sport this season. Last season for them... 32 games, 3 goals, 5 assists. So he's matched his goal scoring record in a lot fewer games. The season before that, 21 games, 1 goal. The season before that, 21 games, no goals. 2018-19, 33 games, no goals. So the record for, uh, for Cynic, compared to previous seasons at his hometown club, actually looks alright. And they're solid mid-table in the Turkish Super League, our Antalya Sport. I think, I think we have seen the last of Dokan Sinek in a Hull City shirt, to be honest with you. It is worth noting as well that Sinek had a little spell on the sidelines with injury missing games against Konya Spor, Adana Demir Spor, Kaizira Spor, Kashim Pasha and Besiktas. The next player, the penultimate player I'm going to cover in this video is Jake Leak, who went out on loan to Scunthorpe when they brought in a load of players after their takeover at the end of January, start of February time. He played 16 times for them um, across his three months on loan, scored once, 
and it was difficult really to get any information about how Leek did. So that is why I got in contact with Gareth Iron Army on YouTube to give me a bit more information about how he thought young Jake Leek, centre back or left back, whichever one he played at, did out on loan at Glanford Park. Hey, hello, this is Iron Army, um, Scunthorpe United vlogger, uh, Grandpa Joe. You want to have my thoughts on Jake Leek? He was on loan at Scunthorpe United. Um, I think we picked him up on the, it was announced on the 2nd of February um, this year, this season. Played 16 games for us, scored one goal, and was booked three times. Um, the goal he scored was a, a really good run, in fairness, beat a few men and um, slotted it home. But other than that, um, yeah, he got tackles in, but for me, he wasn't the best left back that we've had. Um, obviously, he's 20 years old, um, still got a lot of time to develop and grow into the game. But I don't think the tactics helped him in that we played very narrow. So a lot of the time, there was lots of space on the right hand side. Um, obviously, he plays at left back. So players running down the wing, the right hand side, lots of space to run into. He's very narrow, like I said. So it didn't help. Yeah, I don't think we saw the best of him. He's got a really good long throw. Um, other than that, I don't think there were that many fans that took to him. But yeah, I don't think that, you know, it was for us. Just at the time, you know, signed with a lot of other people as well, a lot of other players. We were trying to stay up and we just seemed to throw everything at it. So it probably didn't do him any favours in that respect also. Um, a lot of pressure. But yeah, no, he likes to get forward. Try and get forward. Like I say he's got his long throw that he can get into the box. Finally, Timothy Lotatala. After a load of goalkeeping trouble at Stevenage this season, Lotatala was the last player they drafted in on just constantly renewing week long emergency loans for him. And he seemed to do quite well for Stevenage from what I saw fans saying on social media at the time. He played seven times for them, helping guide them to promotion and to give you the full lowdown. Here is Matt Farley, host of the Stevenage Football Club podcast, to give us all Hull City fans the full insight into how Timothy Lotta Tyler looked between the sticks for Stevenage as they won promotion from League Two to League One for next season. Um, just a quick assessment on Tim, really. Um, Tim was absolutely fantastic for us. We'd had a terrible season where we'd seen an influx of goalkeepers come in. We had loads of injuries to goalkeepers. And Tim was actually our sixth, believe it or not, in the season, sixth or seventh uh, goalkeeper. So we were in a real crisis with that and, and trying to push for promotion at the time. We really needed a goalkeeper to come in and really kind of steady the ship. Um, and that's exactly what Tim did. Um, he was absolutely phenomenal in those kind of last five to six games of getting us over the line. He was a brilliant shot stopper, really good with his hands in the box. He came out and, and kind of commanded the box really well from balls into the box. His distribution was excellent. I think that was one thing that we were looking at with Tim, being in League Two at the time. You know, how good is his kicking? How good is his distribution? And Tim's got a fantastic range on him, which was massively helpful to us in the division um he's certainly a very talented young goalkeeper and he's going to go on and play up the divisions and i think we could see that when he was playing for us um he kept three consecutive clean sheets in our last three games and i think that showed his ability and talent along with the boys at the back um and he's gone down as a bit of a club legend for us kind of earning promotion uh, with the team at the end so yeah look we wish the best of luck to tim i'm sure that he'll go on to be your main goalkeeper um, at Hull City obviously he's he's there with Tottenham as well isn't he but um, I, I do think he's got that ability to go on and play League One and Championship football um, but yeah Tim was great great shot stopper great with his distribution uh, really vocal at the back um, and I think he's going to go on to have a, a terrific career and that is that thank you for watching ladies and gentlemen I hope you've enjoyed it thank you to everyone who sent me uh, video clips or voice messages to feature in this video all of their links are down in the description as well for the Wickham one, I just want to thank the Wickham way, George as well, for helping me get in contact with James, because uh, George I contacted first, but he hadn't seen the game that Cartwright played in, um, so he got me in contact with James, and you know, it, incredible. Thank you so much to both of them and to everyone else who featured. Hope you found that somewhat informative, and 
let's see what the future holds for all of these players. Some it will be here, some I think it will be on to pastures new. Thank you for watching everybody. Take care, up the Tigers and goodbye.